Good morning. We have a short video to help us begin to center our minds and our hearts for worship. you enjoyed that. I sure did. I can find my first paper here. The Lord be with you. And we welcome you to worship. You're going to have some different sort of experiences today and I hope that you will leave with a smile like the eight o'clock service did. We're happy to see everyone here today, and we hope that you, um, those of you who read Facebook, saw that you were supposed to do your stretches, upper body stretches, before you came today, and that you're ready to participate. We especially want to welcome our first-time guests. Please remember to sign in on our attendance pads at the end of each pew and pass them on down. And if you are a first-time guest, there's a special bright orange card in the pews to use as you sign in and place, or in the folder, and place that in the offertory for us. Thank you. Join us for a time of, of conversation and snacks in the worship friendship center after the worship this morning. We have announced few announcements in the bulletin. Um, please read those at your leisure. And something that's not listed in the bulletin, but is pretty exciting coming up, is that needs your prayers, your hands, your feet, your service. Our vacation Bible school this year. We're trying something new, and that is that every Wednesday through the month of July, we're doing a VBS night for all ages. It's for families to join together. Like in previous years, there'll be music, there'll be snacks, there's storytelling, there's activities and fun. But to put this all together, we need volunteers. It's an ecumenical um, effort, event, so there'll be people from other churches volunteering too, but we need you. Contact Ashley to help, and there's a flyer, there are flyers by the large screen TV if you'd like to take one for some more information. Also in the bulletin, there's lay servant training, um, the basic lay servant and advanced transforming evangelism training. <laughs> Ooh, 
will be held on Friday, June 26th, and Saturday, June 27th. There's a contact for that. Don't make up your mind just yet about whether you want to do these things. Save it for later in the service. Okay. Um, the the um, people who we have on our prayer concerns, um, we need to add a few more to those. Kevin Utech and his family, um, Kevin had surgery this week. Hopefully it took care of... of the issues he's been having, but he will be in recovery for a while. The Breeden family had a, another death, Kevin Ronfeld, um, and the, the roses are from that service. Terry Kelling's sister, Jerry, uh, passed away also, so keep that family in your prayers as well. If you'll join me now for the prayers of the people. Oh God, we want to thank you today and begin this prayer with thanksgiving. We're so fortunate to have what we have and live where we live. We thank you for blessing us. We pray for leaders of our world. Give them wisdom as they're making decisions that impact lives way beyond their own. We pray for a person suffering. We lift up persons on our prayer lists and concerns. We also have others in our hearts who haven't been mentioned this morning. Be with them, Lord. Give them strength. Help them feel your love. We pray for Pastor Rose and Pastor Crow as they face this next month of transitions. We pray for ease through those transitions and for them to feel the assurance that they are loved and needed. We pray for students and teachers as they finish this year and begin their summer break. Keep them safe. Give them rest. We end this time of prayer now with the prayer that you have taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Okay, we'd like you to stand and greet each other, um, offering a cup of cold water through a smile, a greeting, a hello. Please stand if you are able to join us in prayerful, careful worship. You got us, Barb warned you, you had to be ready today, yeah. For your goodness and generosity in giving us all we need, help us to praise you, O God. In every circumstance in life, in good times and bad, help us to trust you, O God. When we struggle to say yes, As we speak or listen to give to those nearby or far away. In our plans and work for ourselves and for others. In every thought and word and deed by the power of your Holy Spirit. Please remain standing for opening hymn, the servant song, number 2222 in the Black, the Faith We Sing hymnal.
We will now be reading from the Old Testament in Isaiah chapter 6, verses 1 through 8. If you would like to follow along in the Pew Bible, please turn to page 597. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne high and lofty, and the hem of his robe filled the temple. Seraphs were in attendance above him, each had six wings, with two they covered their faces, and with two they covered their feet, and with two they flew. And one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. The pivots on the thresholds shook as the voices of those who called and the house filled with smoke. And I said, Woe is me. I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips. Yet my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphs flew to me, holding a live coal that had been taken from the altar with a pair of tongs. The seraph touched my mouth with it and said, Now, this, now that this has touched your lips, your guilt has departed and your sin is blotted out. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? And I said, Here, I, here am I, send me. This is the word of God for the people of God. And now at this time, we'd like to invite the children and the young at heart to come for a special time with Melissa Breeden. Okay. Hi. <laughs> um, all right. What? Do you want to do this? <laughs> I don't think you need a microphone. Uh, okay. How many of you uh, know what a random act of kindness is? What does it mean to do that? What is it? Um, you do. You 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 be kind to somebody like on out of random, like because you don't you don't plan it out, but you just see somebody who's like really sad or something, and you be nice to them. That's good. Or it's helping someone when they they need it, but they don't ask you. Just you just go ahead and do it, right? Um, he's very big into TV remotes, so we have an old one that he chews on. <laughs> um, a random act of kindness is doing a selfless act for someone who needs it or cheering up somebody who's, who's sad or giving a smile. Um, what, are, what are a random act of kindness that you can do? Um, you can, you know, what's something kind you can do? Give somebody a hug. There you go, give somebody a hug. Um, tell funny jokes tell for funny people who need cheered up.
Try to clean up something? Yeah, I know. You don't really need to. You have your remote. Alright, well, I my random act of kindness to you today is to share um, my favorite candy. And since nobody else came up here, I'm not sharing with you. I'm just kidding. Thank you, Grandpa. <laughs> All right. Well, what's a random act of kindness you could do? Oh, sometimes it might be like uh, paying for a person's uh, coffee in the line behind you. Yeah, that I've heard of lots of people that do that. All right. So, Kara, could you pass out a starburst? And why don't you give out two or three, and they can um, share one with others. <laughs> Grandpa just put them all in his pocket. <laughs> all right, so this summer I want you all to um, go and, and be kind or show kindness to others around you that if they need a smile or a baby needs to be bounced around to stop crying. I know. All right, and that's all. Since from Barb Norman, let us sing together, Here I Am, Lord, number 593 in the United Methodist Hymnal.
thank you, Julie. Wow. <laughs> I love the fact that um, Ashley put lesson up there. This is not a sermon. It is a lesson. I am a teacher. So we're going to talk today um, about things that you can do, cups of cold water, so to speak, for our community and affirm you in the things that you are doing. You know, we, we look at the world around us and we see the immenseness of the troubles, the suffering, the crisis that's everywhere. And we often feel that we're, we're just small. We just have a few dollars. Our efforts can't make much of a difference. You know, but the truth is that Jesus rarely calls one person to minister to masses of people. Instead, he teaches us the importance of helping one needy person. I'm going to read now from Matthew 10, just verse 42. And if you give, whoever gives, even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones in the name of a disciple, truly I tell you, none of these will lose their reward. You see, Jesus is telling us, the non-full-time ministry people, that when we offer a cup of cold water, and you know water is the life-sustaining liquid, the, you know, perhaps that help when I need it most sort of thing, then we will be rewarded. And we are, we'll be following his instructions to us. We're helping to spread his message. Those of you who have a bulletin, sorry, would turn to the front page of it, and you notice there's a yes on there. Okay. If you don't have a bulletin, find another piece of paper and write yes on it. Or just find a paper and raise it in the air and pretend there's a yes on it. I don't, you know, whatever you need to do to have a yes in your hand. All right. I'm going to present to you many cup of cold water actions or events because sometimes we don't know exactly what that is, a cup of cold water. What does that mean? What was God meaning? I went to a Sunday school class a few weeks ago. It was the first and second graders. And I asked them, um, what, what is a cup of cold water? What would, what would that mean if you were going to give somebody a cup of cold water? And there were three students there that day, Foster, and Brock and Kelsey were in that class, along with probably that many adults, too. And we were discussing this. And the kids knew. They came up with these things. One of them said, well, maybe it's like giving people clothes and shoes, like in winter, so they can have coats. Yes, indeed. Maybe it's food. So we can save our food and, and not eat it all and give it to them so they can have it in their cupboards. Water. Oh, you know, water can make a flood. <laughs> Too much water can make you die. But yet you need water to live, one of they said. So what can we do? How can we help? Their suggestions. Take stuff to goodwill. Take food to people. Oh, like I do with my grandma and grandpa when I take meals on wheels. Yep, they have it. They know. And we're going to show, I'm going to show you today that you have it too. So, because this type of movement in church is not natural, you notice how you're all sitting here like this with your arms to your sides. Okay, we're going to practice this so you get into a little bit of a frame of mind of raising the yes. Okay. Some easy questions. Here we go. Have you come to church today? Yes. Yes, good job. Did you drive a vehicle or ride in a vehicle today? Got it, good. Did you walk to church today? Aha, good job. Did you smile at someone today? Okay. Did you listen to someone today? Okay, you got it? See, it's not hard. 
you just raise it, you got the idea, right? Now we have um, coming on the screen a list of actions and events that we consider as offering a cup of cold water. These actions are second nature to many of you. Um, they can be the community type of act, events and actions. They can be church related. Some of them involve many levels. For instance, if you had an event that would require planning, would require donating, require working at it, cleaning up at it, all of those things are involved when that event is mentioned. Um, so also remember, this is not a competition. We do not want you to try to be the most yeses in the air, um, but it is an affirmation activity. And if you're a guest with us today, think of actions that you do in your, your community or your church and raise your yeses as well. Okay, here we go with the list. Are you ready? Food, delivering meals to others, individually, to the kitchen, wherever. Community meals on Tuesday, anyone help with that? Blessed community on Wednesday. Meals on wheels. Okay, we've got some unenthusiastic people going on here. Now, some of you are saying yes, but you're not saying yes with enthusiasm. Okay, let's try a little harder. Here we go. Summer library lunches. Good job. Tiger Pack program, and this is many levels of it. Tiger Pack program. Fellowship times, volunteering to feed our congregation. Good job. Funeral lunches, preparing foods and working them. Good. Now we're going to community groups, if you're involved in these as you hear them. Scouts. Anybody with scouts here? Good. PEO. Second Mile, which is a community group. Lots of volunteers for that from our church. Greenery of Grinnell. This takes a little explaining, perhaps. This is Earl. If anybody helps Earl, <laughs> this is the, the yes for that. There you go. <laughs> childhood literacy, reading with kids, reading in schools, childhood literacy. Good job. Kwanians. The Rotary Club. Do we have any Rotarians here? Okay, giving rides to people. We have rides when they are coming to church or Sunday school or any kind of thing. Good. Doctor appointments. Good. Shopping or other events to. <laughs> Merkel, what kind of. Okay, clothes, how about donating clothes to Second Mile? Oh, look at that, yay, everybody. <laughs> Hats, shoes, good clothes. Our prayer shawl ministry, we have some people involved in that here, good. Visiting, visiting nursing homes, shut-ins beyond nursing homes, good. Lonely, the grieving, limited mobility, just caring for other people by going to see them. This is our miscellaneous category. S supplying items for mission kits and putting together mission kits and delivering mission kits. Donating to Micah, we're good here for that. Good job. Donating to the milk voucher program. Yay. Gifts for Jesus during the holiday times. Good job. Pals, volunteering and, and working with pals. Christmas shares, buying gifts for families, nice. Kids Against Hunger, packing food, and donating. Okay, Crop Walk, good. Give Back Sunday, it used to be November, but we moved it to October last year, so good. Church-wide garage sale, that takes a lot of you, I know, all right. VBS, and remember what I said about thinking <laughs> later in the service. Be a part of VBS. Second mile donations and volunteering. Good job. Schools and community youth programs, sports teams, and just volunteering, readers in the classrooms, good. 
Wow. How's your arm feel? Should feel exercised. You guys did an excellent job. And we could have added more. Um, UMW wasn't on there. And there are many things that we, that we just couldn't catch them all. Good job, everybody. Good job. Look at you. And now for a little break, since you probably need a rest. We have a video coming, a short little video with no words, that just shows just how one small thing can make a difference. Wherever you are in life, whether you're a busy college student or a homemaker with little ones, a business person with a demanding career, a single parent working two jobs, a retired person looking to volunteer or having volunteered too much already, Christ is going to meet you right where you are in your desire to care for the hurting. You can accept Jesus' invitation to care for the needy no matter what your schedule is, what your financial situation is, what your education level is, remember that whatever you do in Jesus' name to even one person, just even giving a cup of cold water, you've done it to Christ himself. And now we're going deeper. I'm going to read um, a scripture from Matthew right now, Matthew 37 through 40. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when was it? that we saw you hungry and gave you food or thirsty and gave you something to drink? And when was it that we saw you a stranger and welcomed you or naked and gave you clothing? And when was it that we saw you sick or in prison and visited you? And the king will answer them, truly I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of these who are members of my family, you did it to me. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In preparation for this Sunday, I focused on two books. I purchased a book called A Cup of Cold Water, and you can see the cover of it there. It's by Lori Newman, and this book will be in the library after church today. She divides ideas for giving others as deep, deeper, and deeper yet, which is where we got the, the divisions in the bulletin about this lesson. And I think she used it, um, those terms, to define commit levels of commitment or maybe risk risk of of giving or doing she also has wonderful lo other little writings in here about our call as Christ as our call as Christians to do what we can for who we can whenever we can the other book that I resourced was 
Christian caregiving a way of life. It's by Kenneth Hawk, the um, founder and developer of Stephen Ministry. This is a book that Stephen Ministry training uh, uses extensively in the first few weeks. In this book, he covers the tools of Christian caregiving, prayer, the Bible, sharing a blessing, and a cup of cold water. He very much emphasizes, though, that no other tool, not a prayer or scripture, can be as powerful as a cup of cold water given in Jesus' name. So we're going to go to our deeper list now. You have your yeses still? We need everybody with their yeses still. And we're going to add on a little bit to this. Now I want you to not only say yes when you've participated or are participating in something, but yes if you would consider doing it, or yes if it's of interest to you. Okay? Some of these things on this list we haven't started here and may not. Some of these things we do. Here we go. Worship at Mitchellville. If you've been there or would like to go, raise your hand. Yes. Keeping $5 gift cards in your purse or wallet. She su this came from the cup of cold water. Um, she suggested this saying, sometimes we're hesitant to give money, just cash to people, because we don't know where they're going to use it or we don't know what would happen to it. But giving a gift card seems a little safer. So buy a few. Have it in your billfold if you see someone in need. Gift cards. Picking up mica items every time you shop. Bringing neighborhood families to VBS in church. Here's, here's a thought. Setting up a prayer table and giving out water, cold water, at a community event? Idea. Organizing a block party in different parts of town. Think about this one carefully, because it may be coming to a church near you soon. Would you be in involved? Carrying gloves, hats, scarves in your car to give away in cold weather. Collecting money and supporting a child in a third world country. Those of you who've been through seventh grade Sunday school. <laughs> yes, we have one, don't we, Brian? Others do it too, I know. Taking a mission trip. Many have done it or would consider it. Okay. Collecting love gifts for persons in crisis. I don't know, I wasn't aware of this until a few years ago, that our church office often is accepting money, almost uh, uh, probably constantly, for someone who is having a tough time in their life. If you ever feel a need or feel the push or prompt to um, call the office and see if there's something like that going on that you can donate some, some money to would be a good thing. Worship at local care facilities. This is something that Rob has just begun. Um, he's done a couple already and would welcome people helping. How many of you already are a part of worshiping and would consider that, please? Another wow. I, we have the best spot up here being able to see all of these yeses. It is, it is wonderful um, how active and how much giving that you do. We now will have our We Are Called song. It's the end of the message. Amen. No, not message. Lesson. Amen. Um, Faith We Sing 2172. We Are Called. And I hope you feel called.
Amen. I spoke a little too soon. Your lesson isn't over yet. Sorry. <coughs> um, during the offertory time today, um, there's a couple of things are going to be happening. We are going to receive your offerings as normal. Um, we're s then we're sending a second basket for you to receive. In that second basket, you'll see magnets with the scripture reference from the first scripture I read about offering a cup of cold water and stickers with that same reference and straws, keeping with the water theme. So please take a magnet as, or as many as you will use and stickers, as many as you want, and straws as well. My prayer is that as you give, so you will receive. May these gifts be a reminder that we are called to be always open to the chances that God puts in front of us to be kind, to move as Jesus would move us. With that entry, we have a special video also. He moves, you move, as we let us give and receive. Ladies and gentlemen, it's an honor to have a real swinging camp with us tonight. You, you're scared to take a step, afraid to see what's next. So you wait till you think it's safe to move. You tend to think too much. You need to open up your heart to see where he is leading with the lamb. Just for your feet, a spotlight just for your path. When he moves, you got to move, you know you got to lose control. Doxology. Doxology now, if you'll please start.
join in the prayer of dedication. From you comes every gift we need, every blessing we have. May we not hoard them for ourselves, but offer them back to you, that the poor might be fed, the lonely befriended, and the despairing be filled with hope. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Remain standing, please. Okay, we come now to the deeper still time. Do you still have your yeses? Okay. The opportunities are endless. The reality is, because we are Christians and God is in our lives, he's like in every part of our being, any caring or any relating that we do to others is in his name. So I have one last question for you. Will you continue to look for ways to offer a cup of cold water to others? Be assured God goes with you and we are offering you a cup of cold water for those who are hungry, cold, or in need. Go in peace. Yes. Ha, 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 ha.